You're taking a relaxing stroll along the beach, taking in the sea air, listening to the crashing waves before you, enjoying the warm summer sun on your face. Along the way, you take a second to look back at the footprints you've left behind. To your surprise, instead of your footprints pointing ahead as you would expect, you notice yours are actually pointing outwards, away from one another. This is known as out-towing, which could also unfortunately be described as being duck-footed, since it is similar to how our fine-feathered friend walks. Being the ever-curious anatomy student that you are, you're probably wondering what muscles might be at play here that cause your feet to point outwards like that. Well, I'm so glad you asked. In today's tutorial, we'll be investigating one muscle which can influence such a walking pattern as we explore the functions of the contratus femoris muscle. In order to better understand the actions that this muscle is capable of, let's first introduce the basic anatomy of the quadratus femoris. The quadratus femoris actually belongs to a group of muscles known as the lateral or external rotators of the thigh, along with five other muscles. The name of this muscle group gives you a hint of their main action, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's look at where this relatively small muscle attaches. The quadratus femoris muscle has its origin here at the ischial tuberosity. It then extends transversely towards its insertion at the intertrochanteric crest of the femur. These attachment sites span across the acetabulofemoral joint, more commonly known to us as the hip joint, so it should be rather intuitive that this muscle will only act on this joint. And we'll see how in just a minute. The innovation for the quadratus femoris muscle is super easy to remember. This nerve is simply called the nerve to the quadratus femoris. Doesn't get much easier than that. The nerve to the quadratus femoris is a branch of the sacral plexus, and it may come in handy during exam time to know the nerve root levels of this nerve, which are L4, L5, and S1. Now that we know a bit more about the quadratus femoris muscle, we can start investigating the actions that this muscle is capable of performing. We'll start with the most obvious action. Remember how this muscle belonged to the muscle group called the external rotators of the thigh? So then it's not hard to imagine the quadratus femoris doing just that. That is externally or laterally rotating the thigh, which occurs at the hip joint. It's important to remember that this action doesn't just only occur from a neutral stance, like what we just saw. If we have our model start with an internally or medially rotated hip joint, we can see how the quadratus femoris can externally rotate the thigh back to the neutral position. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.